Hello family, we thank God for today, we give him glory for the gift of life, for his mercy, for his compassion. Today I shall carry on looking at how to keep a pure heart. In the last episode I looked at lust and imagination and that was based on the passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 where Jesus goes on to indicate that adultery is not just a physical act but a person can commit adultery even with their heart but today I want to focus on adultery and divorce and my passage of scripture is pretty much a continuation of from the verse 31 of Matthew chapter 5. So I'm reading verse 31 to verse 32. And this is what it says in the Amplified Version. It has also been said, whoever divorces his wife is to give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife except on grounds of sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery and whoever marries a woman who has been divorced commits adultery. Now I know that in Christian circles now there are so many views or thoughts in regards to divorce. There are some school of thought that feel that there's divorce it's okay irrespective of what the grounds is so long as an individual who's married even if they're Christian decides that for whatever reason they do not want to go ahead with the marriage that they've got every ground to make that decision because it is their life there are some school of thought that basically stick with what we have read here in this passage of scripture which is what Jesus said that divorce of a woman and he was talking of the woman because back in that era the man had more power and control and influence and so on the men were the ones who were actually asking for a certificate of divorce and so on and so Jesus was saying that the only ground upon which a person can divorce his wife or her, her husband is if there has been sexual immorality in other words, a person has committed adultery. Now, many people also believe that, particularly now where we're living in a world where we're hearing consistently of violent relationships, domestic abuse, and so on, there are some who also, because of the fact that many people have lost their lives because they've been in such um, physically violent or abusive relationships, have lost their lives, there are some people within Christian circles who believe that domestic, physical, violent abuse is a reason or grounds for divorce. But today I don't want to get into all of those. I just want to go by what Jesus was saying in this passage of scripture. Now I want to quickly read Matthew chapter 19. I'm going to read from verse 3 to verse 11. And the Amplified says this. And Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, Is it lawful? For a man to divorce his wife for just any reason, he replied, Have you never read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined inseparably to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. I want you to take note of that. So they, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. The Pharisees said to him, Why then did Moses command us to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? He said to them, Because your hearts were hard and stubborn, Moses permitted you 
to divorce your wife. But from the beginning, it has not been this way. I want you to take note of that also. Verse 9, it says, I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, commits adultery. The disciple said to Jesus, if the relationship of a man with his wife is like this, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, not all men can accept this statement, but only those to whom the capacity to receive it has been given. I ask that you take note of where Jesus says, and the two shall become one flesh. It has been even recognized in law that the only way a marriage is deemed a marriage is if consummation takes place, which is a sexual act. And if a sexual act does not take place, in a supposed marriage, it can be annulled. And so I just really want to quickly share with you what I came across on Wikipedia in terms of consummation. I'll just read a few excerpts. It says, in many traditions and statutes of civil or religious law, the consummation of a marriage, often called, simply called consummation, is the first act of sexual intercourse between two people following their marriage to each other. Another paragraph says that in some legal systems, a marriage may be annulled if it has not been consummated. Consummation is also relevant in the case of a common law marriage. Then I will read uh, the subheading religious marriage. It says, According to traditional Christian theological interpretation, it is intended by God for the husband to be the one to break his wife's hymen, which when perforated during intercourse creates a blood covenant that seals the bond of holy matrimony between husband and wife. Now I want to stop there. That blood covenant that is formed is the reason why I believe that even though two human beings come together, Jesus goes on to say that those two human beings are no longer considered as two separate people, but they are considered as one because of this covenant that they enter into as a result of the sexual activity that they have. And I believe it is on the basis of that that Jesus then went on to explain that, yes, you could decide to divorce your wife, but if you divorce her, other than on the grounds that she has committed sexual um, immorality, you pretty much expose this woman to go and, and actually commit adultery because as far as that spiritual aspect of, of, of the consummation is concerned, it does, a, a covenant has been established. So whether the person goes away or not, as far as God is concerned, in his eyes, they are still married. So though a certificate of divorce is issued, God still sees the two of them as being one because of that covenant. And it seems that what Jesus was saying, that the only way the covenant can be broken is if this person, this wife that you're sending away, has committed sexual immorality. Then you will be released from this covenant. Now, as I share this, I am sure there's a likelihood that there may be some of you listening who perhaps have found yourself um, divorced for other reasons other than what Jesus stated. And so you may be wondering, does it then mean that you have acted sinfully, you have committed adultery and so on and so forth? I want to just simply go by what the scripture says. And I know that we all revere God. And just as we were able to accept the scripture that Jesus says that if you look up on, onto a woman, or somebody of the opposite sex, lastly, you have committed adultery in your heart. In the physical, in the natural, it does not make sense, but we know that Jesus is the one who created all flesh, and everything that he tells us is wisdom. So my response would be to go to Almighty God, to tell him this is the, what his word has said, and to ask that if you have committed adultery, 
or have caused somebody else to commit adultery because you find a certificate of divorce and the ground was not what Jesus gave. We know that we serve a God who tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our sins when we have sinned and we confess our sins. But in relation to this particular topic of keeping a pure heart, I will therefore encourage you, if you find yourself in a scenario where you're contemplating divorce, other than the reason why Jesus, that Jesus gave, then I would again encourage you to seek biblical counsel, start off on the basis of this word. If you feel you do not want to share your challenges or the problems you're facing, go to Almighty God. Let him know that you want to do that which is right by him, based on this word that he has given, and ask him for wisdom. For some people, it may mean you might need to seek counsel, maybe not only from spiritual leaders, but perhaps from professional counselors, people who um, work with people, um, families, and, and uh, maybe um, have got experience in marriage counseling and so on and so forth. But in doing so, I would also caution that it is important that the counsel you receive, you back it up and you verify it with what scripture is saying. Reason being that I have heard people even sometimes say that we can go on and um, uh, uh, marry more than one pe wife and so on, even some being church leaders and so on and so forth, and they may relay it back to what was happening in the Old Testament times. But if I look at what Jesus was saying, even based on the scripture that I have read, it seems to suggest that he was endorsing one man or woman being with one partner and if you're not married and you're contemplating marriage or you're in a relationship with someone I will therefore on the basis of this again encourage you to seek the counsel of God to find out the person you're looking to marry is that his will for your life and sometimes you know whether it's his will for your life because he might give you a word people would come and give you a word people will endorse will tell you whether they think they see red flags or not, and so on and so forth. Because as we walk with Jesus, he wants us to be those who keep a pure heart. But also, I am reminded of this passage of scripture, which I quickly want to share with you. In Luke chapter 17, verse 1, it says this, Jesus said to his disciples, Stumbling blocks, temptations and traps set to lure one to sin are sure to come. But woe, judgment is coming to him through whom they come. In other words, you do not want to be the one who causes somebody else to commit adultery because of your own choice or because of a wrong decision that you made. So Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, I pray that, Lord, for anyone, and there will be so many questions that people will have, which time will not permit me to delve into. But knowing that you said in your word that whoever lacks wisdom, when we come to you and we ask of you wisdom, you will give us wisdom. I am asking for wisdom for anyone who would want to delve deeper into the subject and your knowledge and your understanding, not what human beings have said, but what you have said. And give them the grace, the humility to accept that wisdom, to accept that knowledge, even if it's contrary to what they are accustomed to. Continue to protect us our families, our friends, our loved ones, our children, our spouses, Father, and keep, for oh God, as safe from harm and danger. Show us your mercy and may your goodness, Father God, follow us all the days of our life and give your angel charge concerning us so that, Lord, we will not even dash our foot against the stone. We thank you in Jesus' name. We're now going over our memory verse in Matthew 6, 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. We're personalizing it by saying, I am careful not to practice my righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Therefore, I receive my reward from my Father in heaven. Be blessed, and I look forward to being with you next week. Amen.